The name's Marsh. Webster Marsh of the Lighting Controls Podcast. Found at lightingcontrolspodcast.com. And tonight in controls. The street lamps are flickering. The theater's gone cold. And I've got a question that keeps facilities managers, designers, and safety hawks up at night. What happens when the power gets cut? This is Tonight in Controls, a program for folks who know the difference between ambience and anarchy. If you're always looking up when you enter a room, wondering which end of the light fixture you're on, you've stumbled into the right place. But we're not here to talk about mood lighting. We're talking about egress lighting, the kind that shows you the way out when everything else goes dark. Imagine you're in a concert hall. The lights dance to the beat, the colors bleed emotion, and the crowd is lost in it. Suddenly, the juice cuts out. No time for drama. No time for a reboot. People need a way out, and they need it now. Here's the rub. Most concert halls use a protocol that goes by the name of DMX 512. It's the workhorse of the entertainment world. But unlike most architectural protocols, DMX 512 is the smooth talking artist of the lighting world. Beautiful, mercurial, and a royal pain in the neck when it comes to following the rules. Especially the ones that go by the name National Electrical Code, or NEC for short. Back in the shadows of the old skyline, buildings wore their emergency gear like badges. Those twin-eyed bug eyes glaring down from the ceiling, ready to blaze a trail through smoke and fear when the power cut out. Ugly? Sure, but dependable. They didn't care about mood or aesthetics. They cared about one thing, lighting the way out when things went sideways. Then the designers came in, slick suits and slicker ideas. Let's make it beautiful, they said. Let's integrate emergency lighting into the regular fixtures. The bug eyes got whacked, replaced by high-end luminaires with designer trims and smooth dimming curves. Trouble was, these fixtures didn't know when to panic. See, when emergency hits, the rules change. The normal controls, out the window. You need a controller that knows how to ignore the system, how to override the boss and go full blaze, no questions asked. That's when the NEC stepped into the picture with UL924 at its back. The standard said, forget the finesse, bypass the control signal, go straight to full output when the world starts crumbling. Works like a charm with old school 0 to 10 volt gear. Cut the control wire and boom, full output. Dolly? With the right setup, you can make it behave. But DMX 512? That's another story. DMX 512 is the wild card. You cut the signal, and instead of waking up, the fixture plays dead. Or worse, freezes in place. Maybe that's off. Maybe it's a whisper of red at 3%. Not exactly the beacon of salvation in a smoke-filled corridor. So now, you've got a concert hall packed with DMX 512 fixtures, all dressed in attitude in a theatrical haze. The house goes dark. Is it part of the show? Wait too long, and the crowd panics. Then the fire alarm wails. But those lights, they're waiting for a cue that'll never come. You need a plan. Pathway Connectivity Solutions steps out of the alley with something in its coat pocket. The DMX at Emergency Controller. Think of it like a bouncer for your DMX 512 setup. Doesn't say much. Doesn't need to. But the second things go sideways, it's calling the shots. Now let me level with you. This episode ain't sponsored. No one's greasing palms or whispering in ears. But credit where it's due. Pathway did send over a unit. Let us take a look under the hood. No strings, just cold hard tech. And folks, it delivers. In the calm before the storm, DMX, it's just loitering in the signal chain. No fuss, no flash. But when the power drops or the fire alarm screams bloody murder, it steps in and takes the wheel. Suddenly emergency levels snap on exactly the way you program them. Full house lights, a low path of amber glow. You decide what panic looks like, so long as the officials at the top give the nod. The DM exit just makes sure it happens fast, real fast. And when the dust settles, you get to choose when and how things go back to normal. Monomac return, remote button, delayed reset. This isn't some one trick pony. It's a system with style. It's smart where it counts. Test buttons up front, LEDs that talk straight, and mounting options for every backstage nook and rack mounted cranny. No cover popping, no guesswork, just answers. But this isn't just about gear, it's about people. 
When the house goes black, this little box might be the only thing standing between cool-headed evacuation and chaos in the aisles. In this world of intelligent controls and smarter-than-thou lighting systems, we can't afford to forget the one thing that matters most, the people. So here's a takeaway, the one-liner for your building's next script. If you're running DMX 512 in a space that can't afford shadows when the world stops spinning, if Yule 924 compliance is more than a box to check, if you need controls that listen when it matters most, then the DM exit isn't an option. It's the exit strategy. I can tell some of you aren't convinced. You're thinking, this is the age of intelligent lighting. Surely, there's a clever way to wrangle DMX into behaving under pressure. Sure, clever works. Until the smoke gets thick and the means cut out, then clever gets you killed. See, the problem with intelligence is that it assumes everything's working. UL 924 doesn't make assumptions. It deals in absolutes. Emergency hits, you override everything. No soft fade, no master controller deciding what's best. You kill the noise and flood the scene with light. End of story. But DMX 512 wasn't built for absolutes. It's a protocol built for nuance. Color fades, chases, cues stacked like cards in a magician's deck. Pull the plug and the fixture doesn't know to scream. It just stands there waiting for a cue from a console that's already lost power. And unless you've engineered a failsafe, a physical, brutal, dumb as brick solution that forces those lights to blast full output, you're dancing in the dark. There's gear for it, sure. Specialized DMX hold relays, contact closure triggered bypasses. Some people wire in a separate emergency DMX stream. Others rig a full blackout relay that drops power to the DMX controller entirely, forcing the fixture into its emergency mode, assuming it even has one, but it's a workaround a patch job on a protocol that wasn't meant for emergencies. And that's the hitch, isn't it? DMX 512 is an architainment dream. But emergencies aren't about dreams. The National Electrical Code draws a hard line in the sand. You cross it with anything less than guaranteed light output, and you're gambling with liability, life safety, maybe even your license. So go ahead, get creative. Just make sure that when the house lights die and the crowd's on their feet in the dark, your fixtures don't freeze like they forgot their lines. And that's the grit in the gears. You can dress up a fixture, give it all the colors of the rainbow, tie it to a symphony of dimmers and cues. But when the alarms wail and the world tilts sideways, only one thing matters. Does the light turn on? In this town, lighting isn't just aesthetics, it's survival. And whether you're designing for a black box theater or a glass and steel cathedral, the moment will come when everything fades to black, literally. What happens next isn't up to your lighting designer. It's up to how you planned for failure. So double check your specs, trace your relays, and make sure the system's got your back, otherwise it might be your end. This is Webster Marsh from the Lighting Controls Podcast. Thanks to the Acuity Brands Lighting and Pathway Connectivity Solutions, the kind of folks who know the importance of keeping the lights on when everything else goes dark. That's the news from the city, where a simple flick of a switch tells a story. This is Webster Marsh of the Lighting Controls Podcast bidding you good night.